Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week I'm going to cover a topic that is kind of touchy to many. We're going to look at an aspect of half bridge and full bridge amplifiers that you may not have considered, may not know, may not understand. And this video is made possible by GetUpside. It's a simple download for Android and Apple devices. You get a rebate on gas that you're already buying when you buy at one of these gas stations that is participating. From the ones near me, you can see we've got 10 cents per gallon off, 12 cents, even 25 cents a gallon cash back. And as you can see from my history, I've been saving a lot. I've been using this since uh, February, so about six months that I've been using this and I've saved over $100 on gas purchases. So follow the description in the link below Download GetUpside and start saving money on your gasoline. And that is frequency response of these two amplifiers when and where they should be used. One reason why full bridge amplifiers might seem tempting is they're super cheap. One reason why they're super cheap, they don't have that many components. Now there are a lot of arguments that could be had in regards to that uh, as to why they would be unreliable which they typically are, uh, or they might overheat, as they often do. We're going to throw all that to the side and look at why you would use one of these over the other and what they're intended for. So this is a Teramps Smart 3. It's supposed to be used on mids. It's not supposed to be used on subs. There are some full bridge amplifiers that are intended to be used on subs but majority of them are not. This is a half bridge EMF Audio 2000 AF available on emfcaraudio.com. This is intended only for subs. And there's a reason it's bigger. Now I know what you're thinking. Power is power. And if this has the ability to produce the power, then it's the same thing. It's gonna sound just as good, which may not be accurate. We may tackle that in this video as well. But the actual frequency response, this is supposed to respond from 10 hertz to 10,000 hertz. And there are provisions on the crossover for that as well. So you should be able to adjust all that uh, to how you want to use it for vocals on high pass or subs on low pass. It's intended to do that by the controls. But that could also be band pass on mid ranges, not so much for use on subs. But you might think that you could use this on subs just fine. And then this, of course, you would not use on mids because it doesn't have the frequency response uh, that high. It's not intended to be that high. That's not where you should be trying to use this. This is just a regular Class D design, it's not a full range Class D. So we will be comparing this one on low end response and this one on low end response but we're going to do it without a speaker so we don't have any type of change or interference from impedance shift or physical limitations of the driver itself we're going to put a dmm uh, directly on here so you can see the voltage out and we'll see what voltage fluctuations we have frequency to frequency between these two amps to keep all this fair, we're going to do sweeps of uh, varying frequencies, starting at 10 and going on up. Uh, this is obviously not going to do so hot above about 250, 300 hertz, as it should not be. Uh, but we're still going to do uh, the same sweeps, so you kind of get an idea of uh, what happens when you run out of bandwidth of the limitation of the design. We're also going to do individual frequencies, so you know exactly what frequency is being played when voltage is changing or not changing, we'll see what happens. Because this is a 2000 watt amplifier, we are going to figure out uh, the peak voltage that it should be, which should be uh, being a one ohm amplifier, uh, 2000, and then take the square root of that, and that's how you would get that number. And that's gonna be just shy of 45 volts. So at 45 Hertz, which should uh, not be reflected in frequency response at all, using 45 hertz, we are going to set this to pretty close to 45 volts. And uh, that will be our baseline volume. 
Okay, so at volume 23, we've got 42.8 volts. I might be able to fool with the gain and the volume a little bit and get that dialed exactly in, but I don't think that's going to be necessary because we're not looking for maximum power, just kind of around the area where we know it's going to be uh, clean from the output. So one thing to ensure accuracy of everything that we're doing, we want to make sure that the subsonic is turned all the way down to 10 hertz, which it is. We don't have bass boost on at all. Low pass frequency is going to be all the way up to 250 hertz. So we should definitely fall off after 250 as a result of the crossover. And we're going to start at 10 to 100 hertz, which is typically going to be in your bass range. It should even be lower than that. And that's going to happen over one minute time. So we should watch this voltage and see how it changes over the next 60 seconds. Okay, we saw some voltage fluctuation, but it was relatively small, one, one and a half volts in that neighborhood. So the next one we're gonna go up to is 10 to 1000, so we can better demonstrate exactly how this falls off over that 250. Now the changes are gonna happen more rapidly because it's the same 60 seconds, but we're going to 1000 hertz instead of 100 hertz. And here we go. And now we're seeing the voltage fall off rapidly as we get over 250 hertz. And I also noticed that it was actually stronger around the 10 to 20 hertz. So in the lows, it had 42 volts, then went down to 40. And our voltage is just plummeting off because we're well over the 250 hertz mark. So now that you've got an idea of what happens exactly when it's supposed to happen that way, let's go to individual frequencies. We're gonna go to 20 hertz, 45 hertz, 65 hertz, and then 1000 hertz. So you can see precisely the difference between all those. And it'll only be holding that one frequency so you can focus on the voltage at those frequencies. So at 20 hertz, we're sitting right around 41 volts. We go up to 45 hertz, we're at 39 volts. So at 20 hertz, it's actually producing more voltage, more power, by just a little bit. 65 hertz, we're at 39. So we're just a hair below the 45 hertz. And all the way up at 1000 hertz, we're down to 1.6 volts because this isn't meant to play it. The crossover set so it can't play it. It's not gonna work out. Now it is worth noting that I am using the rear output from this to ensure that we're not using the sub output. Kind of know that's what you're thinking. There's something else going on, but we're out of the full range output from the head unit that has no filtering on it. So now you see what should be happening is uh, we're actually putting out a little bit more power at lower frequencies, but all in all, it's pretty close together. We're within 3% of what it should be maintaining across the entire bandwidth 
that this amp can play. So now we're going to swap out to the Terra amps and see if we get the same results running the same tests. If you like the video so far, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you aren't already, hit the notification bell, and you can also join as an exclusive member by hitting the join button right near subscribe or following the link in the description below. You will get access to all of these videos before everyone else, as well as some other perks like giveaways and the ability to uh, converse with me in live chats. All for the cost of less than one cup of coffee. So we're going to set up the tear amps the same way as we did the other amp. We've got 45 hertz and because this is a 3000 watt amp and it does advertise it can't operate at one ohm, we are going to set it up the same way at just under 55 volts. It's 54 and some change. So right in that neighborhood is where we're gonna take it. On these settings, we've got a high pass, a low pass, and a bass boost. Again, the frequency won't matter on the bass boost because it is all the way down. Our high pass is going to be set to 10 hertz because we want everything above 10 hertz. And our low pass is gonna be set to 10,000 hertz because we want everything below 10,000. So on 45, we're gonna get up close to 55 volts. We've got a big jump there, so I'm going to adjust the gain a little bit. There, 54 volts, uh, so we're just under the maximum where it should be there. And we're going to do the same thing, uh, starting with a 10 to 100 a sweep, which again, this amp uh, is set to everything full range. It's supposed to go up to 10,000 hertz from 10 to 10,000. The head unit can go up to that no problem. There are 10 to 100 hertz. Starting at 42 volts, go up to 44, 45, 47, 48. 50. Voltage is still going up. 53. 54, so voltage is still going up. 54. And it seems to have leveled off. So we went from pretty low to much higher in that 10 to 100. Uh, so we're gonna do 10 to 1000 and we should get kind of the same result. Remember this will all be happening over 60 seconds so this number is going to change quicker. 10 to 1000. Starting off at 43. Climbing quickly to 50. And now surpassing 53, so we've already gone up 10 volts. And we're not gaining voltage as quickly anymore. Okay, so we saw a very significant voltage shift going from 10 to 1,000. And 1,000 is in your full range. That's where this is intended to be used. So I've also got 
10 to 10,000 because this is supposed to play up to 10,000. So because we're testing frequency response, we're gonna go all the way up to where it says it can do it. We already know that on the low end, you're gonna lose some voltage. And we're gonna go back and see what it does tone by tone. So now we're gonna check up to 10,000 and see if it falls off on the high end as well, or is it just strong in the middle? There's our quick rise again. We're hanging out around 55 volts, which is what we saw before. And it's falling off just a little bit here on the top end. And now falling down quite a bit harder. Okay, so on the top end of response, it fell off as well. Now I don't know exactly what frequency, and we may be able to figure that out, but we're not worried about what this does in full range. Just know that on the top end of response, it falls way off. Um, it looked like above maybe 5,000 it started to fall off, uh, but we're gonna check individual frequencies and the volume still has not changed. We're starting at 20 Hertz so we can get a solid voltage number. So we've got 51 volts going up to 45. We've got 54 volts. going up to 65, almost 55 volts. And at 1,000, we're right around 55 volts. So from 20 hertz to 1,000 hertz, we saw about an 8% difference in power. So that's 8% less power that you're getting at lower frequencies. The whole reason this test came about is because a customer told me that they swapped amps to a full bridge and it didn't play as low as well. I have seen other amps that have a much larger variance. Uh, some are showing as much as 30 to 50 percent less power at lower frequencies. So this one's on the better side of things, but where we saw more power out of the half bridge amp on the full bridge amp, we're seeing 8 percent less. When you go below 20 hertz, you see even less, closer to 20% difference, even though it says frequency response is down to 10 hertz. How many people are actually playing 10 hertz or between 10 and 20? Not very much, but still consideration of what's being advertised to what you're actually getting. So what did we learn from this? Full bridge amplifiers that are intended to be used as a full range amplifier don't work as well on subs as a half bridge amplifier that is intended to be used on subs. I already know in the comments, people are gonna go, my system plays low, fine. But have you tried a different amplifier in that system? It's not showing that it won't play it at all. It's just saying that it won't play it as well. You'll get more power, you'll have better bandwidth, uh, everything will be linear if you use an amplifier that can produce that bandwidth in a linear fashion. And then you'll hit me with, well, I'll just use a processor and I'll boost it. Then you're just trying to boost where it lacks and then cause other problems with other things. You're trying to compensate by using something else to cover up something else when you could have just done it right the first time. So the moral of the story is buy amplifiers that are intended to be used for the purpose they are made, a full range, Full bridge isn't actually full range. Uh, going up to 10,000 isn't even the limit which you'd really put tweeters on because there is content beyond that and you saw how fast it fell off beyond that. So they're not good for subs. They're not exactly full range. They're just a mid range amplifier. Aside from all that, there is still the concept of 
reliability and efficiency and those kind of things in which you should just buy a subwoofer amplifier. If you have any suggestions for future videos, make sure you comment those below. If you're angry at the result of this, you'll probably comment that below. Make sure if you're interested in the premium subscription where you get exclusive videos, giveaways, and early access, you follow the description below to join as a premium member or hit that join button next to the subscribe button, which you should already be subscribed because as it turns out, two thirds of you that watch my videos are not subscribed. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.